Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompey. Anyway, we have a lot to get into. Patrick Hornquist was traded by the Penguins this week. We'll delve into that trade. The Pirates have ended their 60 game season with 19 wins, but some encouragement for one key Brian Hayes. We'll delve into that. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Steelers off to a very impressive 3 0 start after winning, coming from behind today to beat the Houston Texans. Your panel includes Rich Walsh over at Studio B, Chris Muller from the PM team is up at the fan, and Chris Mack from the fan morning show is down at the bottom right. And Chris Mack, we'll start with you on this one. I thought the Steelers did a one heck of a job in the second half after Deshaun Watson pretty much had their number. I think it was 14 for 18, 200 plus yards, two touchdowns, a 150 rating, and then things drastically changed. Which Steeler team defensively are we looking at? The one we saw in the first half or the one we saw in the second half or a combination of both? You know, I, I think we have to take everything we've seen the first three weeks, guys, with a, a big grain of salt because they've gotten off to slow starts on both sides of the ball against all three of these teams, none of whom have a victory between the three of them. So, they look great at times. When the pass rush gets home, uh, they do some fantastic things. And when Watt and Dupree make plays, this defense looks unstoppable. But when a quarterback gets more than a few seconds, he's finding some holes in the secondaries, uh, in their secondary. And maybe that happens with any decent NFL caliber quarterback. It happened the first two weeks with Jones and Driscoll, and they got their first quarterback test this week in Deshaun Watson. They struggled a bit in the first half, as you pointed out, Bob, but in the second half, they were great. And then conversely, I thought the offense, after looking really bad in the first quarter, I think Ben Roethlisberger was like three of seven or three of nine, turned it on after that as he's done in the first three weeks. Guys, I think this is a confident group when you look at it. You know, when you're confident, maybe you relax a little bit and you, you fall asleep there. Uh, you're allowed to sleep a little bit. And I think that's what happens with the defense and the offense for that matter. Uh, but for the defense, they're much better than this. And I think the defense is more of what we saw in the second half than the first half. And you know what? I think it's because of a lack of preseason. They didn't really get into any kind of rhythm. And I know the starters, you could say maybe the starters don't play much in the preseason, but the preseason helps you become a team. And that's why I think that these first four games, um, if they can get through this with a 3-1 and one record or a 4-0 oh record, that's, that's going to be pretty good because then you'll start to see this real team. Well, I don't think we know uh, what version of this defense the real one is yet, and I think that's sort of the problem right now because we saw this team, really this whole football team, hasn't put together 60 really good minutes yet. Uh, they've played either a good half or a bad half. You know, good half of offense in the first half of this game, great second half of defense, and full credit to Mike Tomlin, to Keith Butler for making whatever adjustments they made at halftime. Uh, this was the first real test they got, and so I grade it much more favorably on the old curve here because Deshaun Watson is not Daniel Jones or Drew Locke or Jeff Driscoll. But bottom line is, you know, it's still a work in progress for this team, and they need to show me they can play a full 60-minute game. It's amazing what a quarterback can do. Ben Roethlisberger's back, and it seems like everybody around him gets better. We've seen that with a lot of individual guys. I want to talk about the running game. We seem we talk about this all the time. First, Chooks Okorafor may have been the star of the game for what he did to J.J. Watt. But uh, Chris Muller, start with you on this one. With the run game, James Conner, again over 100 yards. That's two out of three. The other 100-yard back was Benny Snell. Yet there was more of a committee approach in this game. Which is the way to go if you're Mike Tomlin moving forward? I have no problem with what Mike Tomlin did. I thought they should have used Benny Snell early on that third and one play where they ended up kicking a field goal for their first points of the game. That was inexplicable to me why you don't have your kind of grinding short yardage guy in there. I liked seeing McFarland get out on the field, though. Frankly, I thought it was a nice change of pace. I think that you could reasonably assume that it might have helped open things up for Connor uh, a little bit. I, and full marks to James Connor, by the way, because James Connor showed me something today. I thought that the guy was falling off. Uh, he looked like every bit the running back they think he is uh, and was running with authority. No question James Conner looked a lot better this week. Uh, last week, I kind of throw away. You take that 59-yard run out of the mix, then he averaged three yards a carry. He showed me a lot more today, and I think he needed to prove something to everyone. You're going against one of the worst run defenses in the NFL, and he proved a lot. He rushed for over 100 yards. He had 140 total yards today. Uh, he was a big part of this win, especially when you looked at the fourth quarter in their last two drives, he really sealed it. He had 73 total yards in the Steelers for the Steelers in the fourth quarter. So I, I, I want to bring up that third and two early 
in the game. I thought that could have been the turning point. And the fact that they used Jalen Samuels, I don't mind them running the play. But I thought maybe you either run a different play or you don't use Jalen Samuels. And then if you're going to run that play, let's go for it on fourth down right there, not kick the field goal. I thought that could have been a turning point. And, but luckily for the Steelers, it wasn't, and they were able to get over that. Yeah, what I take out of the running game today, guys, is this is the closest we're going to get to running back by committee in a Mike Tomlin offense. It, it is. 18 carries for Connor, 13 between Snell and McFarland. I like the way they mixed it up. I like the fact that they showed a little bit of trust in Benny Snell, despite the, the fumbles in the first two weeks, going to him late in, in the ball game, and, and then letting Connor close it out, like you said, Chris, uh, this is proof positive that I think we're probably headed back towards a little bit of a, a workhorse situation where Connor will be the guy because Connor simply is better the more you hand it to him and the more he gets to grind down on defenses throughout a game. And it feels like we're headed back in that direction. Well, Chris which Tomlin said it after the game. He said it after the game that Connor is our guy. So we know that and moving forward be. that Connor is the guy. And he should be because he's put up the numbers when he's healthy. Why should Anthony – hold on. That's fine. Why shouldn't Anthony McFarland, at the very least, and Benny Snell have roles in this offense, though? That's my problem. Like, you can have your featured running back if you're Mike Tomlin, but I think Anthony McFarland especially is now the kind of guy that I want to see more of. He can make people miss. He's explosive. He actually runs uh, and shows the defense something different. There's a little bit of redundancy in their running backs. I like leaving him around to, uh, to give defenses something to look at and something different but, to consider. I agree with you. There's no question. I want to see more of McFarland. Uh, this guy really, he, he's like, uh, he, he added a spark to this offense a little bit, something that they haven't had. And I, hopefully we see more of this guy. And if it means splitting carries with Connor, I would be all in favor of that one. Yeah, well, yeah. you're going to see him on the field, but you're not going to see him taking the, the workhorse away. It's still going to be Connor and then everyone else. And I thought what they did today was pretty interesting and probably the way they go. Real quick here, offensive line. Uh, I thought it was outstanding today. We saw Dotson last week, Rich, step in as a rookie and do extremely well today. Chooks Okorafor was you, you haven't seen J.J. Watt off the score sheet, basically, and you didn't. No, no tackles for losses, no hits. That was as good a performance from someone who I didn't expect it from. Not that he's, you know, he's, he's developing, but I didn't expect him to handle J.J. Watt like that. Yeah, neither did I. And I think getting David DeCastro back, you get the veteran back there, it eases a, a little bit there. Um, so, for me, I thought the offensive line did great, and you see it on the stat sheet. Uh, you're able to have another 100-yard rusher, plus the other guys did a good job right there, and they won the game. So, um, no matter where you put J.J. Watt, anyone on the offensive line handled him. All right. I'm still concerned, guys. I don't know about you, about the, the other two veterans on this offensive line. Pouncey is still having some issues from time to time. No bad snaps today. Uh, but he and Al Villanueva both had their moments today in pass protection where they, they gave up big pushes. I mean, Whitney Merciless basically pushed Al Villanueva into Ben's lap at one point. So uh, I like the fact that the Castro looked good, but those two still have me questioning some things. All right, we're going to take a break I'm just on gonna, that. I was just going to say, hold on. I was waiting for it because we had a time concerns. queue there. I, I didn't want to rush anyone, but I, I at know. the same time, we're up against it. So I'm uh, simply going to echo Chris's concerns about Pouncey, but especially Villanueva, who looks like he's on skates out there, and that is not a good sign. Yeah, there are a lot of good signs. That's not one of them. Uh, and especially when you're talking about teams coming up that could put pressure on him and on them in that situation, which leads us into what's happening next week. You've got a battle of two 3-0 and teams coming up. We're going to break that down. And we have uh, Hockey Talk with Patrick Hornquist leaving town and the Pirates, specifically Key Brian Hayes, all coming up. You're watching the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. The number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 